Hello, my name is Mark Cobbin. I'm Head of Bereavement here at Farley Hospice in Chelmsford. This video today is an introduction to so-called adult bereavement support. That's our bereavement service for the community of Mid-Essex and for those connected with Farley. The video today is designed to give you an idea of how to refer yourself to the service, a little bit about what to expect when you're in the service and also the impact of grief. So uh, we'll get started. I will move to a PowerPoint presentation and we'll work through that together. So as I said, this is an introduction to service, but I think the important things are what do we offer? So Circle Adult Bereavement Support offers a range of options for you. That includes information, guidance, advice, some individual support, counselling and we have groups. The current service offering is slightly revised due to the COVID restrictions, but if you really need to know what it is um, for the current moment in time, then give the office a ring. Of course, that's constantly being updated and changed. So a little bit more about our services. So information, advice and guidance. Well, we have a list of resources, both local ones, national ones. And if you're looking for some other help, then we might be able to direct you towards something that will be of use. It may be that you're just looking for a little bit of advice and guidance on how you're feeling. Is this normal? Um, am I reacting in the way I should be? Just some questions that you might have, in which case just ring us at the office and we'd be happy to help you. So if you're referred into the service support sessions, well, what are they? Well, support is provided by our team of trained volunteers. They're all very, very experienced in the impact of grief and bereavement what it means for your emotional well-being, your physical health, and they can guide you through that. And we like to think that they're good listeners who will be alongside you during your journey. And if you are feeling perhaps that you can't talk to your family or maybe that those around you have um, you know, dealt with their grief differently, but you're still struggling and you want to speak to someone, then speaking to a support worker or some support over a number of sessions may be helpful, so do contact us. Counselling. Well, counselling is provided by a team of trained volunteers. We have both student counsellors who are here with us on placement and qualified counsellors who volunteer their time. We also have a small team of professional counsellors and both our support workers and the counsellors offer up to 12 sessions of individual work. Groups. Well, normally we have a range of groups offering um, of working at any one time. Currently our offering is online support groups and they're run by a trained facilitator with possibly up to seven people plus the facilitators. We like to keep it to a small number because it makes it more intimate, less daunting, more friendly if you wish to attend. The groups are held over six sessions on a weekly basis for one hour each. And they start at different times throughout the year. So do contact the office and we'll be able to tell you when the next one is beginning. So what is grief? Well, grief are feelings and emotions that arise from your loss, from your bereavement. And it will affect each of us differently. And you don't necessarily need to worry about the fact that you might not be reacting in the same way that other family members are. Often people say to us, well, X is doing this or Y is doing that, but I don't feel like that. And that is normal. We will each react differently. However, if you take a step back from that and look across a range of people, there are some commonalities. There are feelings and reactions that are shared amongst all sorts of people. And it's some of these that we'll come on to look at. So what happens when you're grieving? Well, it's complex and there are a number of factors that will influence how you react. And one of the primary ones is who died and your relationship with that person. And it can also be impacted upon how they died and the cause of their death. So, for instance, it may be someone who you're very close to who had a long cancer journey. That may feel very different to someone who was perhaps a work colleague who maybe died suddenly in a road traffic accident. How you feel may be very different. 
Where someone died, did they die at home or perhaps in a care home? Were they in hospital at the time? Each of those things may mean something different. In, in the case of someone who's in hospital, with the recent COVID restrictions, you might not have been able to visit them. But if they were at home, you might have been by their bedside and that can make a difference. How many bereavements you've previously experienced will also impact on how you cope with this bereavement. Is this your first one? Is this one of several that you've had? But even if you've had several bereavements, each loss will be very different. Your emotional state and your physical well-being at the time will also impact. So for instance, if you're struggling with a, an illness of your own, if you are um, having a bout of depression perhaps, when a bereavement happens, the impact will be very different to someone who is perhaps not struggling with those things. And the support you have around you, do you have close family and friends? Are they in regular contact? Or are you someone who perhaps lives alone and doesn't have a lot of local support? That will make a difference to you. So now we're going to look at a little bit of theory. And this may look a bit confusing, but I'll go through and explain it to you. It's by Strober and Schutt, and it's called their dual process model. And how they look at it is that bereavement is a part of everyday life experience. It's something that almost all of us will experience at some point. And as you can see, it has three kind of distinct session, sections. The first on the left hand side is the loss oriented side. You have the oscillation in the middle and the restoration oriented side on the right. So I'll start with the loss oriented. And this side is perhaps um, one way to think about it is focused more on the strong, overwhelming emotional side of grief. And Strober and Schutt talk about grief work and its intrusion into your life. And what they mean is grief workers looking at and allowing and dealing with the feelings that come from your loss. So that could be anger, it could be depression, it could be sadness, um, it could be guilt, all sorts of things. And those emotions are a normal part of grief and they will pop up at different times they will intrude into our lives. They will be there with us. Um, we may feel that we're perhaps going to burst into tears at some point, or we may actively start crying for no particular reason, or perhaps because there's been a, pers a particular trigger. Maybe a song has come onto the radio that meant something, and it might set you off. So grief does intrude into our lives regularly. And then they talk about relinquishing, continuing, relocating bonds and ties. Well, this is an important thing. Um, it's around um, accepting that that person has died. And so we have to let go of some things. But also part of this is what do we keep? Because when somebody dies, we keep the memory of them. We keep the emotions. We keep the love. We keep what they meant to us in all those different ways. And it stays with us, but it stays in a different way. And that's what they mean about relocating it. We have to adjust to that connection with the deceased being different. And there's also denial and avoidance of restoration changes. So what they're talking about there is, if you don't move over to the other side, to the restoration side, then and you will potentially struggle. If you just stay with the emotions and those emotions overwhelm you and that's the sole focus of what you're doing, that can potentially um, lead to problems and issues for you. And it may well be that you need to seek help if that's how you manage your grief. Now let's move to the right hand side, to the green side, to the restoration side. Well, what's this about? Well, they talk about attending to life changes and doing new things. Well, attending to life changes means accepting that things are different and may, making those changes managing in a new way. So that may be learning to get up on the morning and you go and put the washing machine on 
and you perhaps have to make your breakfast. Um, and it may be that your other half used to bring you a cup of tea in bed or something. And that's not happening now and you have to do things differently. And then it's talking about doing new things. Well, that's slightly different to what I've mentioned. Doing new things is about getting out and perhaps starting to do something that maybe you didn't do before or possibly even reconnecting with something that you did a long time ago. So it could be something uh, like taking up a new hobby, perhaps joining the bowls club, perhaps going bowling, getting out, meeting with new people, starting to um, look outward, join some different activities, getting something new and different into your life. And these things can be a distraction from your grief, as can going to work. So if you have been off of work after your bereavement and you're going back to work, it might seem very daunting and it will take a while to get used to it. But actually, it can also be a distraction from grief and having a distraction from grief can be helpful. And I'll come on to that a little bit more later. Denial and avoidance of grief. So if you stay on this side and ignore the loss oriented side, in other words, ignore those feelings, ignore the tears, ignore the strong emotions that you have, try and squash them, pretend they don't exist, don't think about them, keep busy, distract yourself. That can be too difficult and too unhelpful and can lead to problems as well. You do need to experience those emotions. And new roles and identities and relationships. Well, sometimes new roles and identities and relationships are forced upon us by our bereavement. So, for instance, if you are a um, married person and it's your partner who dies, you may suddenly have to take on new roles. You may have to start to do the school run or it might be that now you're a single parent. It might be that you have to go and do the shopping where your other half did that. and Now you are doing that as well as other things. It may be that you have to start to make new relationships with people um, in order to manage that. Start to go out and find a nursery, for instance, those kinds of things. Now, the middle section has that squiggly line and it's called oscillation. So what does that mean? Sounds like a strange word. Well, what happens is in grief, we move from one side to the other. We don't necessarily naturally stay on one or the other. And in the early stages, we will probably be more on the loss side, moving across to the restoration side occasionally. And as time goes on, perhaps spending more time in the restoration side, moving back to the loss side occasionally. An example of that would be, um, let's say, getting up in the morning, you wake up and you remember your loved one's not there. You feel very sad, you might have a few tears, you try and pull yourself together, you feel very low and a bit lonely, you get yourself ready, you go to work, you get to work and you start doing your job and you're working and you're focusing on what you're doing and you're not thinking about your loved one, you're thinking about your work. And then what happens is uh, gets to coffee break and you sit down, and you stop and you suddenly think about your loved one. Well, what you've done is move from the loss side across into the restoration side, distracted yourself, gone back over into the loss side and then say the phone rings and you go back to your desk, you answer the call, and you're back into work again. So you've moved back to the other side. And that's an example of moving from one to the other. And as I mentioned earlier, sometimes our grief intrudes and suddenly something will happen and we'll suddenly be back in the lost side, whereas we may have been on the restoration side. So sometimes it's controlled. Most of the time it happens naturally and that movement between the two is healthy. Now, I mentioned earlier that distraction from grief is good. And what Strobel and Schutz say, if you're grieving and you're in the lost side all the time, that will become overwhelming and you need time away from your grief. Um, so being distracted is a little bit like recharging your battery. It helps you to manage. However, as they also say, if you do that constantly, that's unhealthy because you do need to experience both sides. So what does it mean for us? Well, another thing is that grief doesn't follow a straight line. It's not one step after another. It's possibly two steps forward, one step back, three steps forward, 
two steps back, one forward, two back. That's how it happens. In the early days, there may be disbelief. So you may have heard people saying it doesn't feel real or I can't believe they've died. It just doesn't sink in at all. I'm not accepting it. And that's the disbelief or denial or shock that happens in the early stages, but that will gradually wear off over time. And tears, they are OK. It's all right to cry. And we shouldn't stop people from crying. We should support them and allow them and just be with them. And it's not embarrassing. It's not um, something that you should be ashamed of. It's not something that anyone needs to apologise for. Tears are OK. There will be good days and there will be bad days and there may be no reason why that happens. It just does sometimes. Um, there may be a trigger. Sometimes it can be you're on a good day and somebody says something that upsets you and then you're into a bad day. But sometimes there's just no rhyme or reason. And we'll experience those strong emotions, sadness, anger, loneliness, depression, guilt, frustration, hurt. They're all there. And it may be that for you, you're experiencing them in a heightened way, a way that isn't what you're used to. And that can be quite challenging at times. Some days, all of those feelings might feel too much and we just need an escape and having that break. And as I mentioned earlier, that can be really helpful to so do. A, do be kind to yourself. Do allow yourself some time to get away. Do allow yourself to just go and do something that takes you out of it. And don't feel guilty about that. Your concentration will be affected. Often people say, I, you know, I can't focus on things and I can't do things in the way I used to. In the early stages it will be and that will change in time and get better. Challenges will come our way, including new roles, responsibilities. So another example there is paying for the car insurance, perhaps. It feels like quite a responsibility to get that right. And if you haven't done it before, ask for help. Um, there are people around, friends, family, who may be able to help you do that. And talking to friends and family is good. Sharing memory, memories and remembering the person. It's really important to do that. Sometimes situations can arise where you don't want to say anything in case you upset them. Your family members may be not saying anything to you because they don't want to upset you. It may be that you need to say, well, you know, I do miss X or Y. And do you remember when we did such and such and start a conversation because sharing and allowing each other to talk about it is good. It's healthy. Another thing is rushing to clear out clothes or make changes. Well, we would say let them happen when you're ready. Don't rush them. There's no time pattern. There's no date that you have to have done it by. There's no calendar that you must fall in with. It's just when you are ready. And remember that grief is a process of adjustment. It's about adjusting to that person not being here. And that takes time and how much time is different for each of us. And grief doesn't leave us. It stays with us for the rest of our lives. What happens is we adjust to it and manage it better and it becomes part of who we are and our experience of life. So remember, you can't rush them. There's no ABC and if you do A, B and C, it will be over quickly. It doesn't happen like that. Um, it happens over time when you are ready, when you've experienced the emotions that you need to experience. And most people will manage that process with the support and help of family and friends. They often don't need referral to our service and that's wonderful. But if you do need help, then we're here. And if you are struggling with your mental health and you might feel lonely or you really just don't understand what's going on or it's really having a negative effect on you, then contact us. And we don't get over a bereavement. You may have heard that phrase or you move on or it'll be all right in time. Don't worry about it. Um, it's not like that. As we say, time does make a difference in terms of moving through your griefing process and helping the adjustment. But you don't get over and you don't leave anybody behind. You always keep them with you, but in a different way. They're not there physically but they are still in our hearts and in our feelings and in our thoughts. So how do you access help? So how do you make a referral? So referrals can be accepted from individuals. So you can refer yourself 
or you can be referred by a professional, so a, for instance your GP, from three, four weeks after a bereavement. You can have um, that done also by any other health professional who's involved in your care or possibly a family mem member with your consent, but you must have consented. Any type of bereavement, you don't have to be connected with Varley. Um, and you will need to complete a self-assessment form for us because that then gives us the full details that we need. Um, any adult, 18 plus, living in the Mid-Essex area, registered with a GP in that area. Um, and that covers the Chelmsford, Braintree and Malden districts. And there are some GP practices in the Great Dumbo and Thaxted area who can also access the service. If you're not sure, just contact us. If you live outside of this area, then we can direct you to other local resources and support. As we said earlier, there are other services around um, who can help. So where are the referral forms? Well, they're on the Farley Hospice website, which is at www.farleyhospice.org. Or you can email us at circle at farleyhospice.org or telephone 0245 457 308 and we can send them out to you. And some other of those local and national resources that I mentioned, um, Cruise Bereavement Care is a national charity that has a helpline um, and there's the number and you can contact them. The hours do vary and there will be someone at the end of the phone there to support you. And there are two websites, the Good Grief Trust and At A Loss. They're fairly similar in aim, but they are full of information. They have lots of support and guidance there, some information sheets and things referrals to other organisations, a list of national organisations, those kinds of things. So they're always worth a look. And if we're thinking about children and young people, we may be concerned about. At Fardy, we do have a, a service called the Yo-Yo Project, which is for children and young people between the age of four and 18. And that service um, is accessed uh, and you can find the referral forms on the Farley Hospice website or you can email yo-yo project at farleyhospice.org or telephone the number there 0245 457 416. There is a seven in there. Um, and Childhood Bereavement UK is a national charity with a helpline and other resources on its website. And Winston's Wish has a lots of websites and books and games and things and that you can play with bereaved children and that will help them to understand what loss means. So there are lots of useful resources on that particular website. So what happens after a referral? Well, if it's um, referred in, if you're referred in and you want individual support or maybe counselling, um, your referral will be acknowledged. So we'll send you a letter or an email and you'll need to complete the self-assessment form if you haven't sent that in already. Um, if you don't feel able to fill in the self-assessment form, then we can assess you by telephone or online contact if that's preferable. Now, due to demand, unfortunately, we do have to operate waiting lists. Uh, we are very busy and that's really just due to the high demand that we have, but we will always begin your sessions as soon as we can. And while you're waiting, you're welcome to ring in and say, where am I on the waiting list? Or I need some help. And if you're waiting, you could, of course, come to one of our groups if that's something you wanted to do. Um, and there are other forms of support you can access, for instance, the cruise helpline I mentioned earlier. Another Farley form of support is Grief Chat. Now, Grief Chat is an online support. Um, it's available via the Farley Hospice website. So if you go to the website, look in the bereavement page and scroll down, you'll see Grief Chat there. And you click on it and it's an online chat. Um, so you will be able to um, use that facility to talk with the train counsellor. It operates at um, various hours, um, but that's another form of support that you can access without having to come through the office at all. Of course, you can call the office during office hours, Monday to Friday, and speak with one of the team who will be happy to talk with you and support you if you need just to talk to someone. If we get the voicemail, please leave a message. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. Or you can always email questions or queries to circle at farleyhospice.org and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. So I hope that's been helpful for you today. Thank you for listening. 
it's always difficult to know exactly what's useful to have in these uh, presentations. So if you have any other comments about anything that you think would be helpful for us to include, please let us know. And of course, if you need help, do contact us. Thank you.